The second question this week goes as follows. I've kind of asked this at the beginning of the course, and after going through it and learning what I did, I feel that I'm more cognizant of my mental states and a bit more connected to what's going on during different events throughout the day. I would still like to know if any specific method or practice exists that an individual can use on their own to change the way they respond to their surroundings and their emotions. You used the example of feeling fear when one approaches the edge of a cliff. But what if I wanted to feel excited? And if something were to cause sadness, change it to an accepting of the situation. I feel like I should be able to change my response to my feeling with, with conditioning. But I was hoping if you knew a better practice. So um, the, the general principle, uh, to the extent that I, I can provide any useful advice here, the general principle, which was um, uh, mentioned during the course, is that feelings always aspire to or intend towards objects. That is to say, the only place we can meet our needs in the world, the only way we can solve the problems represented by our feelings is outside, in, re in, in the, in the uh, uh, object world. And our cognitions, our thoughts, that is, are the internalization, internal representations of what we've learned about the outside world. So feelings come up from below and we deal with the feelings by thinking about them on the basis of what we've learned uh, through object representations, through, through, cognitive, um, cogni uh, through cognition. And that's the very general principle and I know that it sounds ex exceedingly abstract, but let me apply it now to the question that you feel something the feeling automatically impels you to do something. There are, with instinctual feelings, there are built-in predictions. I feel fear, I withdraw. Uh, I feel rage, I attack. That's the automatic prediction that's released. We, through cognition, that is to say, through learning from experience about the outside world, we learn more refined ways, more elaborated ways, more variegated ways of dealing with those feelings. In other words, we come up with predictions which, which better fit the complexity and unpredictability, uncertainty um, uh, of the world that we find ourselves in. We add to, we supplement um, the instinctual so solutions that we have. So to use the example of fear that, uh, that, that the questioner used, um, the instinctual response, when I feel fear, I just automatically withdraw. Specifically, actually, one freezes or one flees. Those are the instinctual the, the predicted response is, this is what is going to take away this feeling. This is what is going to get me out of this situation. But you slowly learn that there are much better ways of dealing with fear than always, automatically, inevitably, compulsively fleeing. Um, there are some scary situations which it's actually in your best interest to face them um, and to deal with them in a different way. And so we learn from experience. And how do we do that? We do it by taking possession and this leads to the, 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 the uh, course that we did on agency when I spoke of ownership of one's own intentionality. And that boils down to nothing more than reflexive cognition. That is to say, third person, objective thinking point of view, looking at yourself and saying, I am now feeling this about that. Uh, I want to do the following. Is that the best thing to do? And so you use everything about the world in all of its complexity to think through is this how I really want to behave in other words you take ownership of your volition and you decide how you're going to behave now there are degrees of freedom in this um, as I've said in relation to Daniel and the lion's den of course we all have free will that means we all can like Daniel we can walk into the lion's den that doesn't mean we won't feel fear uh, but we can do it but, you know, the chances of us doing that are much less than us walking into a mouse's cage, if you excuse this, this silly analogy. You know, um, there are pressures which come from feelings which are greater or smaller. And um, it's, it's not always easy to take ownership of these very powerful affects which are aroused by uh, instinctual situations, uh, that, that is to say situations of universal biological significance where the innate prediction really is the right thing to do. Uh, when you're in a lion's den, it's very bad. You know, you really got to get out of there as soon as you can. So I don't want to overstate the extent to which we are able to 
um, take ownership of our volition. But that really is the only way to do it. The only way to do it, that is, is to be self-reflective. That is to say, to think about your emotions, think about your affects, and think your way through them and make decisions as, as rationally as you can um, as to whether or not this is really what you want to do. It's very much easier said than done, which is why there are specialized practices that have been developed um, in different traditions, um, most of which um, go under the heading either of varieties of meditation or varieties of psychotherapy in Eastern and Western traditions. I don't know very much about meditative techniques, but I know enough to know that they're basically um, derived from the same idea, which is, which is to tr uh, transcend instinct, to transcend automaticity, uh, to, to be reflective, to be mindful. Um, and that's also what psychotherapies, all of them, ultimately, one way or another, uh, to the extent that they work, uh, they are based on that sort of taking ownership um, um, uh, of your own um, motivations, of your own volitions. Uh, that is to say, becoming the agent um, of your actions rather than having your actions uh, driven through you, that you are um, the rider of the horse rather than the passenger on the horse, if you will. I'm sorry that I can't give better advice than that. Uh, I'm afraid um, this is one of the age-old problems of life. If only we could really take full command um, of our will and uh, be totally in charge of what we do. And none of us ever, very few of us, I don't know of anyone who actually gets there.